Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to discuss the idea of the size, the true size of the universe. Not just the visible universe, the entire universe. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail and welcome to What The Math. So how big is the universe? Well, if we consider the simulation like the one I'm using right now, Space Engine, then here we can actually physically measure it by going all the way back into the literal end of the universe. I'm going to show you right now what all of this looks like, but be aware though, this is not what the reality looks like. This is just a simulation. Here, by going at the fastest possible speed, it actually takes approximately a minute or so to reach the end of the universe. And it's going to look somewhat similar to what I guess you would imagine it to look. It suddenly kind of just ends, and if you look behind yourself, you'll find complete darkness. But that's, like I said, not the reality. Because this is simply the limit of this particular simulation. What you're seeing right here is what's known as the observable universe, which is essentially kind of like a very, very large bubble that's formed by the speed of light, the limit of the speed of light. Essentially, because the light can only travel at the speed of light, we only get to see the universe from the parts that were able to reach us during the existence of the universe. In a nutshell, when the universe was created and as it started to expand, all of the light that was sent to us from the edge of the universe is literally reaching us right now. And that's what's forming the observable universe. Because we believe the universe to be approximately 13.8 billion years old, it would technically mean that the universe is approximately 13.8 billion light years across. But it's not. It's actually much bigger than this. It's approximately 46 billion light years in every direction. And that's explained by the fact that the universe is also expanding as the time goes on. So in other words, from the beginning of the universe up until now, not only was the universe sending the light from every edge in every direction, but it was also expanding, thus creating this very large spherical shape that's roughly around 46 billion light years in every single direction. Now once again, this is what we refer to as the observable universe, and this is really the only thing we can see, study, and analyze. We don't really know what's beyond that. But here's the thing though, in the last decade or so, we have been discovering signs of things happening beyond, suggesting that the universe itself, the universe uh, as we, I guess, don't know it, is much, much larger than anything we see. And the suggestions for its size have been actually um, anywhere from it being completely infinite, which has been immortalized by this famous quote from Albert Einstein when he said that only two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And he wasn't so sure about the universe anymore. Which of course suggests that what's beyond the observable universe is an infinite universe of, well, technically possibilities. But this is something we cannot really easily prove. On the other hand, there have been papers, specifically at least one major paper, that tried to show the limit of this unobservable universe and find out how large it could truly be. And this is briefly what I wanted to talk about today. So how big is the entire universe? Well, we have the possible minimal limit, basically the smallest size of the universe based on all of the observations we've made over the past few decades. But first of all, what proof do we even have that there is something beyond the observable universe? Well, actually, a few years ago, we've discovered something a little bit unusual. More specifically, approximately 12 years ago, the scientists looking at various tremendously large structures known as galactic superclusters discovered an unusual pattern. Many of them, and not just one or two, like we're talking about pretty much most of them, were actually, interestingly, moving toward a kind of an unusual direction somewhere beyond the observable universe. The scientists couldn't really explain it in any other way, but a lot of these supergalactic clusters were moving roughly around a thousand kilometers per second toward this invisible point. Basically, they were all kind of converging toward the invisible point beyond the observable universe. Essentially, if you were to draw lines, they would all connect somewhere in this invisible depth beyond the horizon. Now, we obviously have no idea what it is and we have no means of ever seeing it because it's basically beyond the expanding universe now. 
but it does seem to be some kind of a really, really large gravitational well. And this concept now has a kind of a name, it's actually known as Dark Flow. Mostly because, once again, when we don't really know something in cosmology, we tend to call it dark, like dark matter, dark energy. And at the same time, um, well, it's a flow, so dark flow. Makes sense, right? Anyway, so this dark flow has been kind of speculative, there have been papers that try to disprove it, but some of the recent papers once again show that something is happening there, so it might be a real phenomenon. Which of course should not really surprise us, because for example, in our own vicinity, in our own galactic supercluster, all of the galaxies are also moving toward an unusual great attractor, as it's known. This very peculiar, very mysterious, and actually visible to us region somewhere in this picture. Everything is moving toward it, it seems to be extremely massive, but we cannot explain what it is and why it's doing this. Something to do with the actual shape of the universe itself, possibly some sort of interaction with once again some dark phenomenon, but we cannot understand it as we just don't have enough data. Nevertheless though, the discovery of so-called dark flow was obviously a pretty good indication that there is a lot more to the universe than what we can see. But how big is it? Can we actually try to estimate the size? Well, right now we only have one possible way of doing this. And it's actually based on the idea of the geometry of the universe mixed with our observations of the so-called cosmic microwave background, the earliest light in the universe. By looking at the CMB, as it's known, we can kind of estimate the approximate shape of the universe. Now, I've talked about the shape of the universe before. As a matter of fact, the study from last year may have actually created a bit of a problem for cosmology, but we still haven't really proved it consistently to make it a theory. We're going to assume that today, as of 2020, the universe is more or less flat. It means that if you were to basically take two lines, parallel lines, and to kind of or I guess two lasers, and shoot them parallel to each other for a very, very, very long distance, they would eventually kind of stay parallel forever. In other words, the universe is flat and it's not going to change the shape of these two lasers. However, if the universe is not flat, like for example, if it's open, or if it's closed, the shape of these lasers would change with time. They would either converge and cross at some point, possibly billions and billions of light years later, or they would diverge and become, I guess, a V-shape. But the reason we think the universe is flat is actually because the observations from the CMB suggest that what we're seeing is what's being predicted by the so-called flat universe idea. But the current calculations of the flatness of the universe are very limited. Well, okay, not very limited. There's a bit of a mistake in there. We assume that the universe is approximately 99% flat. There's still about 1% chance that the universe eventually curves on itself and creates a kind of a circle. And currently, that is the only source of calculation we can use to try to estimate the minimal size of the total universe. So basically, in the paper that you can find in the description below, these scientists uh, decided to do just that. They made an assumption that based on the best calculations available to us, the curvature mistake was about 1%. And so if it is 1%, what is the minimal size of the entire universe? And they came up with the value of roughly around 251 Hubble spheres, or essentially 251 times the observable universe. So take this, multiply by 251. And so according to this study, the universe is roughly around 23 to maybe 24 trillion light years across. Or if we were to talk volumes, approximately 15 million times more voluminous than the observable universe. Now, here's the problem though, we obviously have no means of ever discovering if any of this is true or even confirming these um, ideas. Mostly because, one, our curvature calculations based on the CMB are still kind of being debated, we're not entirely sure how accurate they are. Two, our ideas for the early universe and its expansion and of course the so-called inflation era are still also being debated. We're not even entirely sure how the universe became so big and how small it started. And three is that we only have one proof of so-called dark flow right now. We would need to find a lot more of the evidence of other areas, other regions beyond the observable universe to even try to estimate the total size of the unobservable universe. Without those actual observational pieces of evidence, we unfortunately cannot possibly assume that the universe is 251 times, because that is just the minimal possible um, size of the universe currently. 
it could still be absolutely infinite in size and some of the uh, most prominent cosmologists today do not even dare to go as far as to assume what exactly is happening beyond the observable universe. Some of them have even suggested that maybe what we're seeing here is essentially this somewhat infinite universe that has these bubbles that inflate, becoming their own observable universes, like our own, and in between them is this unusual space that we'll never really get to see. All of this right now is unfortunately very speculative, but at least one study tried to determine the possible size. And that value for now is going to stay at roughly around 23 trillion light years across. But luckily for us, as our technology evolves and as new telescopes like James Webb become operational, we'll be able to see the ancient light even better. As we're able to collect more data about the CMB and determine the actual shape of the universe and try to understand what's really happening to the universe itself, we're going to find ways to calculate the total size, shape, and of course, the age of the universe with a lot more precision. Because right now, a lot of this is based on somewhat old technology. But nevertheless, one day we'll hopefully be able to answer the question of the size of the entire universe, even if we never really get to see what's beyond the observable horizon. And by the way, what's even more interesting is that with time, this horizon will become more and more empty for us. At some point, in approximately 1 trillion years from now, it's actually very likely that the only thing we'll be able to see is our own galaxy. There will be no other galaxies visible to us. And this is something I've discussed in one of the previous videos you can check out on the channel. But unfortunately for now, that is really all we know about the total size of the universe and what lies beyond the so-called observable edge of our own universe. The Hubble sphere as it's known is unfortunately the only thing we can speculate, study and understand. Nothing else beyond it is ever going to be truly scientifically accurate because it's almost impossible for us to deduce what's really happening here. But if one day we're able to explain what these so-called attractors are, like for example, what exactly is this great attractor that a lot of things are headed toward, or what exactly is this dark flow caused by, then we might have a chance to explain what's going on beyond the universe as well, and possibly even once and for all, answer all of the other questions we have about the creation of the universe and of course our place in it. But that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out some of the previous videos on the topic on the channel and also subscribe if you still haven't. There are going to be a lot more similar videos coming in the future, so if you do enjoy science and space sciences, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, possibly support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot, and alternatively you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful wonderful person t-shirt that I'm also wearing right now as well. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.